Oh hey, it's Wes, and today, much like my previous A7 III video, we're going to go through a full setup of the Sony A9. And a lot of these settings are the same, but things are a little bit different in the A9, so I figured we'd head on through that as well. We're going to go into the menu, do the scariest part, do setting reset, and initialize. So this is going to empty out the entire camera. Ugh, I hate doing this. But hopefully someone will get some useful information out of it. So here we start picking our language, date and time. I'm running on Santiago. Let's get into that menu. First of all, file format. I do raw, I'm usually compressed. Extra fine if I do switch over to JPEG. Now the first big difference between the A9 and the A7 III is in this menu to section five, focus area limit. And here, because we have real-time tracking autofocus, I find that I can get rid of quite a few things here. I don't generally use the expand flexible spot. I don't generally use zone or center. And these are the only focus modes that I use. The wide modes for when I'm using just real time tracking, eye, eye autofocus and the like, and some flexible spots whether tracking or not. So now, when you go into the focus mode menu, you have a lot less stuff going on in there. This one's grayed out because I currently have a manual focus lens on this, so it's not kind of going crazy in the background here. But I mean, the background isn't too bad. Maggie! Hi, bud. All right. Autofocus Luminer, I turn that off. I like to turn on my face detect frame display to have as much information as possible. Autofocus with shutter, yep, I don't use back button autofocus. AF area registration, I do like to have that and I'll show you what that is right now. So, if I go to flexible spot small and then move my spot right to here Hold down the function button, now that I have it enabled. Now, although if I'm starting out in wide area, if I press my multi-selector button, also known as the joystick, if I press that, it automatically moves my focus box up to the certain location that I've previously chosen. So that allows you to jump around the screen, say if you've lost your focus box, this one I'm going to turn to red soon, but or if you're in wide area and you quickly want to have spot focus, say in a rule of thirds, you can press down the center button on your joystick and jump to that immediately. This option here, circulate focus point. If you turn that on, you can slide your focus point right off the right side of the screen. It'll come back on the left side. I'm not a big fan of that because anytime I've tried to use it, I just lose track of where my focus box is entirely. So I'd rather not do that, but some people really like that. Focus frame color, boom, it's red. Thank goodness that option was added. Metering mode, currently on multi. I might change that later on depending on what I want to do. Sometimes highlight, sometimes face priority. Face priority is fantastic. Spot metering point, I always want to link that to the focus point. So that if I have a focus point off to the side or something and I'm focusing on one thing, if I'm using aperture priority, the exposure bang automatically adjusts to whatever it is that I'm looking at. Super convenient. So red eye reduction, wireless flash, both off. I use Godox flashes, so they're usually set to fill flash for that to work. Uh, DRO, auto HDR, that's a JPEG function, not really something that I concern myself with. Creative style, I actually lower my contrast and my saturation and bump up my sharpness. The reason for that is 
It makes the perceptual image in your image previews, in your screen, look a little sharper, a little punchier to make it more apparent what is and isn't in focus. Makes it a little bit easier to check focus without zooming in too much on an image. Focus magnifier. I like the double zoom. And I like to have no limit because I hate when it pops back out when I'm still working on it. Peaking setting, peaking on, peaking level low because I find that the high and mid sometimes give you false positives. And I like to have my peaking color on red. As you saw on Maggie's butt there earlier, you couldn't even tell that there was some focus peaking going on in his fur, but with the red, it's much more obvious. I don't generally do face registration. File format, this is how I record my videos, XAVC S, HD, and 60p. S and Q settings, that's generally where I keep it. That's slow and quick, so slow-mo, fast-mo. <laughs> Audio level display, I like having that on. I'm not going to go too far into video settings. I'm mostly a photographer. I don't consider myself an expert videographer. So I'll leave that to other experts. Shutter type auto, release without lens. Since I'm using a fully manual lens that doesn't communicate with the body, I need that to be enabled. But I like to disable release without card just to give myself a heads up as soon as possible that I don't have a card in the body. Now with the A9 and it's especially deep buffer, if you don't have a card in the body and you have that enabled, it will actually take dozens of pictures, save them to the buffer, and then when you put the card in, it will then write those images to the card, which is super convenient and very safe. So even if you don't have a card in and that's enabled, it will save your pictures. Steady shot. So the lens I have on right now is a 50 millimeter lens. So I'll just put that on there for now. All right, display button on the monitor. I like to eliminate a few things here. I don't use the graphic display. I often use the display all info. Turn off for viewfinder. And so these three here are generally the ones that I cycle through. The histogram I like to leave on in the viewfinder, but not on the screen, because if I really need to know what my exposure is doing, I just look through the viewfinder. I should be looking through there anyway if I want to be sure. So I'm going to go into the viewfinder and we've got the histogram. I don't use the level in the viewfinder because generally it's on the tripod when you're using the level and display all info sometimes I like to see. There we go, finder frame weight. We want that on high. I believe when this camera first came out the default was standard, which is unfortunate. I always have my zebras on and I always have them at 100 plus. So what that means is when, for some reason, when you have it set to 100, it only shows zebras, the areas of the image overexposed, right at exactly 100%. If something's even above 100%, it doesn't show zebras. I think it's just to keep the image from getting too uh, busy, but I like to have 100 plus. I wanna see everything. Grid lines, I like to have my rule of thirds grid showing. So then I can easily see things to line up. And now if I crank up my ISO, now we can see what parts of the image are overexposed with the zebras. Okay. I like to turn on my continuous shoot length just to give me a reminder of how hard I'm hitting my buffer. Auto review off, I don't need to see that. We'll get into the custom keys after we finish going through the menu and the function menu settings. I actually reverse those. I like to have the aperture on the back, shutter speed on the front. Movie button always. I find that's perfectly fine, especially when I'm hybrid shooting. On the A7 II series bodies, when the button was on the side, that was super inconvenient. Now that it's in here, not a lot of accidents. Audio signals. Off, I like the camera to be as quiet as possible. Network settings, we won't get too far into that sort of stuff. And the playback settings are fine as default. If you find a brightness, I leave this on auto. On the a7 III, I actually do it manually because I find that it doesn't compensate very smartly on its own, whereas on the a9, it's much more reliable. 
volume settings. I like to turn that up a fair amount because it's not a very loud speaker. And delete confirmation, when you select an image and press delete, I like to have it on delete first. It will increase your chances of having a terrible, terrible accident, but it also really speeds things up. Power save time, I crank that right up. I'm fine with the battery life for the most part. Auto power off, I want to set that to high, so that if there's any circumstance, you're doing something important, this is much less likely to overheat. Honestly, it's almost impossible when you have it set to that. Touch operation, I like to have on. Touch panel and touch pad, so you'll be able to touch it while you're taking pictures, but also use it as a touch pad when you're looking at the viewfinder. And how I do that is on the right one quarter and relative position. So that means that when my big old nose is right here, this right one quarter is still not being activated by the touch screen. And relative position means that wherever I put my thumb, that will start where the curse, where the focus box is, and then I can move it around. Absolute position will adjust the box immediately depending on where you place your thumb, but you don't really know where your thumb is landing. So I find that this to be a more convenient setup. HDMI settings. I actually turn this to 1080p 60. In auto, sometimes it confuses external displays and things that you plug it into. When it's set to straight 1080p, things connect much more quickly. You just have to be aware if you're outputting to something that doesn't take 1080p, you'll have to change that or set it to auto later. And I leave the info on because I'm generally looking at displays to show me what I'm doing, not outputting to a recorder. USB connection. I generally set this to either mass storage or PC remote, depending on what I'm doing, not auto, because it's less likely to confuse the computer that you're plugging it into. Mass storage is for almost everything from firmware, firmware updates to charging to transferring images if you do it through your camera. And PC remote is, say, if I plug into Capture One and want to tether, it works very quickly and easily that way. Not nearly as quickly as, the, as on the A7 III, which has a USB-C port. This is actually a little bit slow. Power supply on, we want to be able to charge it through the USB port. Copyright info. I definitely want that on. I'm going to set my copyright here. Unfortunately, the touchscreen does not do the job for us here, which is a bit of a disappointment. There we go. And that's what I like to see. And we'll turn on right serial number. There are reasons to do that, anti-theft or copyright proving reasons. It's not super important to do though. I don't change the file naming scheme because I rename everything after import anyway when I'm getting ready for the job. For recording mode, I like simultaneous, always simultaneous. So now you can see it's going to simultaneously write images and videos to both cards. Very important. Now you are safe if you have a card failure. If you want to know more about what can happen if you have a card failure, check out my video, Lightning Erased All Their Wedding Pictures. It's fantastic and embarrassing and funny. We're on version six, which I think is the latest. Okay, so that gets us through the basic menu setup itself. Now we're going to move on to our custom keys. So let's head on back. and start in there. Of course, I recorded my custom keys in advance because it's kind of stressful deleting your entire camera. So number one, the rear wheel, I like to have as ISO. Now when I spin this wheel, my ISO changes. Super convenient to have shutter speed, aperture, and ISO dials all independent of each other. No extra button presses required, full manual control. Love it. Number two, Face and eye priority in autofocus. Number three, switch left and right eyes. Number four, shutter type. Yep, that's interesting. That wasn't the default when I first set this up. Number five, monitor brightness. And then we have, in the middle of our uh, multi-selector button or joystick, I like to switch that to registered AF area toggle. Right there. 
So now when we press that button, it jumps back handy dandy to where we want it to be. And then the middle button, I like to use as a focus magnifier button. There. Now, the left button I don't set because that's generally my, uh, my frame rate and shutter rate, and that's already on the selector wheel on the A9, so I don't need that. I'm gonna change this number three to live view. There we go. I like having that. This wasn't an option to toggle before, so I forgot to add that into my list. But basically, if you're using flash photography or shooting in a very dark location and you have flash, you like to turn live view off, then you'll be able to see through the screen and viewfinder even pretty much in pitch dark. Most of the time you want it on for your exposure preview. I'll leave number four at ISO, even though it's not necessary. Number five, I'm going to change to audio signals to decide whether or not my silent shutter makes sound. I wish that was an option on the a7 III. It's nice to not use the shutter, but also have a shutter confirmation that other people can hear. Then on top, I'm going to change my C1 button to subject detection. There. And my C1, or sorry, C2 to focus area. That's fine right there. And I'm fine with the special lens button being focus hold. I generally don't use that anyway. I find the uh, buttons on the camera to be enough on their own. Okay, so let's have a walk around this. So C4, that's my monitor brightness. Change that constantly, whether to save battery life or just ad adapt to a situation. All right, so our down button, let's just choose audio signals. So that's a signal or no sound at all, like that. Display button cycles through our limited display modes. And again, pressing down our joystick, lets us rapidly move our focus box back to one place. AEL button here is going to do face priority and autofocus. If say you're shooting and there are people around and it's not actually certain people that you want to focus on, you turn that off to keep it from jumping all around the place. And the C1 button up top lets us switch rapidly between humans and animals. I find that if that's buried anywhere in the menu, it's kind of useless. If I'm gonna take a picture of a dog and I want to focus on the face, I'm generally not there just for the dog, so I wanna be able to switch over and switch back really quickly. And then our C2 is our very limited focus modes. I love how simple that is, very quick and easy. And AF on would switch eyes if I were looking at some eyes, but I'm not. And C3 over here, Let's just switch between our electronic and mechanical shutters. Very nice. That gets us through our customizable button setup. Moving right along, we're going to set up our function menu. All right, so number one is gonna be our audio record level. Sometimes you need to change that, especially if you have different signals coming into your camera. Number two is going to be face priority in metering. So whether or not it uses faces that it sees to bias the auto metering. And this next one is going to be my S and Q settings. There we go. Next one is going to be my steady shot settings. In case I put a different manual lens on, it lets me very quickly adjust the focal length because I have a 50 and a 35 that I both like to use. And this one's live view display, but again, it wasn't an option to toggle on a button before, so this is kind of a holdover. That's our flash mode. we will leave that there. And here I'm going to change my peaking level and there we have white balance I like that and our creative style that is what we want there so that I can quickly change I can actually go into black and white mode which is a lovely way to shoot I'll have a video on that later and then our file format that is good I don't generally change priority of media so we're gonna bump that out 
for our zebra levels. And the next one, similarly, our zebra display. So this is my function menu here. These are all the things that I use most often. And I find this a very convenient way to keep things set up. Okay, so that was our function menu setup. Moving right along, we're going to set up the My Menu section of the camera, also very important to have. All of your favorite settings, all in one place. So we're going to scroll to the end of the star, and we're going to start adding items. We've added our raw file type. Now we're going to go to our record settings. There we are. Yeah. Our AF drive speed, whether you want it to be snappy and follow you around or look more natural. And then I'm going to wrap back around, turn on my electronic first curtain shutter. Love having that easily available. Auto review. I use that sometimes if I say have my camera set up in more of a photo booth manner. Airplane mode. I generally leave airplane mode on and then turn it off if I need to send something to a camp with to a phone, which I don't do a lot of. Then at the top of the next list, we're gonna have format, something that you do a lot. Record media settings. Then we're gonna have our custom keys because sometimes you need to change them depending on what you're up to. If you realize that your photo shoot is going to involve a certain amount of a certain thing, it's nice to be able to change your custom keys quickly to get that going. So that one, and that one. I don't generally change my playback keys, but put my function menu set up in there. Then I'm going to add in pre-AF, which I always have turned off, unless of course, again, I'm using it in a photo booth way. And then it's nice to be able to have things tracking easily. We're going to do raw file type. Yes. All right, then we're going to do APS-C mode. So we can change that around depending on what we're doing. And then I'm going to add in my volume level. Volume settings. And I think that should just about do it. We've got, uh, here we have raw. File type, record settings, AF settings, electronic front curtain shutter. I have to change that a lot. I'll talk about more of why that is later on. And so these are the menu settings that I use most in the A9. I now have my A9 set back up again the way that I like to use it. Now this is just for me. I'm generally a wedding, portrait, and commercial photographer. You might have other uses for your A9 that you find different settings are good for you, but I hope that there's a good takeaway for you in this video, that you may have learned something about the menu system and hopefully it can speed up your own workflow and make things work for you even better. So, until next time, now that this is all set up again, you can go take some photos.